what is up guys dr brute 7 signing in back with another video tutorial video about this amazing emulation all-in-one emulation distribution software i just happened to come across it when i was trying to look for my next product to review on aliexpress all of a sudden i came across this tiny usb device which surprised me because I was like, what is the description stating? All-in-one emulator device that will allow you to play PlayStation 3 games as well on your PC. That piqued my interest because there is a lot of us who wants to experience PS3, PS2 emulation on our PCs. And this amazing software's name is Retrobat, which is going to give you the easiest and seamless multi-emulation experience think of it like an upgraded and even better retroarch retrobat also hosts retroarch over 150 emulators and brings them under one roof any emulator that you want to experience or install you can do it through here we're gonna get to that in a little bit so here i'm gonna do a brief rundown of what is retrobat installation i'll also help you guys to update retrobat along with demonstrating a couple of the major or the most sought after emulators like pc rpcs3 which is the playstation 3 emulator followed by the pcsx2 which is a playstation 2 emulator these are one of the most important ones that i want to check out and i already did the testing you guys are in for a treat experienced emulation in the most easiest way possible on your windows computer it is specifically made for windows and it's an open source emulation station the interface is fully functional and highly customizable this is the cherry on top it is going to automatically configure the emulators front-end interface with retroarch and other standalone emulators so all the emulators that are made available once you download them they're going to be configured based optimally based on your system configuration given that you have a good enough piece to run these emulators now with that being said I'm using a mid-range PC laptop I consider my laptop to be a mid-range gaming laptop let's get into a bit more detail it says it will al allow you to quickly run games from many compatible ROM collections with that being said YouTube has its own set of rules please do not ask me respect my limitations of sharing these kind of information because it puts my channel on risk and i'm working really hard to get this channel running i really enjoy the work that i'm doing given the niche subscribers and fan base i have i really enjoy making the contents for them just a couple of tappings on your keyboard using with the help of google can lead to wonders so just do that and do your own research the same could be said for the bios because system bios files are the system information that is also prohibited from sharing it can also be run in portable mode it means that you can play games off an external hard drive there's so many things that you can explore i won't be able to cover all of them because i'm still exploring this software whatever i have come across i'll be sharing on this specific video go to the link in the description it will take you to this page once you click on this it will take you to the second page you click on download now it will take you to a third page once you hit on download now it will take you to a screen where you get the chance to donate to the developers because they're doing an awesome task of providing us such an amazing emulation experience feels good to show your support by shelling out whatever money that which you deem is worthy you click on it and it will take you to the next page which will allow you to download the version the setup of retrobat download the latest version and you will get the exe file follow the on-screen instructions retrobat is going to be installed how to apply the update patch on retrobat so if you scroll down on this page you're going to see the update patches that are made available you're gonna have to download the update patch and once that is downloaded this is the update patch now you're going to have to copy and paste the update patch into the retrobat folder click on retrobat which is available on desktop after installation open file location and this is where you're going to copy and paste the updater patch double click on it follow the on-screen instructions to select the retrobat folder ok and hit on install now it's going to install the patch and then after that you're going to run retrobat 
it's a very cool looking interface let it load the library system configurations and everything this is the main screen the library of the software so i would recommend using a joypad instead of using the keyboard because it makes the navigation very seamless the control mappings are much more favored towards a joypad so yeah i would definitely recommend using a compatible usb joypad hit on start or since i'm using my dualshock 4 controller of my playstation 4 so i'm going to hit on options it will bring the main menu scroll down you're going to see updates and downloads hit on x and download themes you can check for updates so yeah update type stable beta so we're going to select stable and start update now it says no update available so we are on the latest version so you download and install themes there is a wide array of themes that are made available i already have one installed if you want to apply it all the way back to the main menu go to user interface settings theme set this is where you're going to find all the available themes and you just have to hit on x there you go if you select retro bat you're going to find all the available emulators that are available to download and experience now the very first one it's a 3d nes emulator which is premium you need to pay a price in order to experience this there is a dolphin emulator there is no yuzu or yujing simulator that is hosted because of obvious reasons we're not going to talk about those there's nintendo 64 playstation portable so there's three different types of ps2 emulators the one that i have found to be most favorable is the avx2 there are several games that are compatible with certain emulator versions so we are on the pcsx2 the latest nightly build now if you want to add in new games just head over to settings add game directory and select the folder do you like to scan the directory say yes and it will just add it also given that i'm running both the emulator and the video capture software i'm going to definitely experience more issues because it's putting more pressure on the cpu here you really do not need to do much other than selecting the bios file if you go to settings and select bios browse for your bios directory select it and that's it setting up the controllers if you look at the right side of this pop-up window it says the what are the devices that are detected now this is the playstation 4 controller now you have to configure it if you select controller port 1 dualshock 2 yeah you're just going to this is the one that is connected so yeah you're just gonna have to like click on this and just and then select assign the button that's it and close it and yeah all right after that you just double click just start the game if you press the left alt button it will bring up this menu you can go to settings if you go to the fourth option now you can change you can override the resolution here the internal resolution you can amp it up to 8k let's try out the rpc as the playstation 3 emulator there's also the xbox 360 emulator it's very interesting man i'm telling you the i'm very surprised and amazed with the performance of the playstation 3 emulation because it runs the games on my pc on my laptop very well okay this is the playstation 3 emulator so once you select each emulator it will ask you to download and install it will give you the option to download and install you just go ahead and install it all right here you really do not need to do anything other than like if you click on open make sure that you select the game folder properly otherwise it's not going to add the game in what i mean is that there shouldn't be any subfolders other than the ps3 game folder directly inside your backup folder so yeah select the folder and it will just add in okay the best thing about the playstation 3 emulator is that it will show you the compatibility of the game dante's inferno works really good the minor stuttering that was happening was because i was using the video capture software edge of time spider-man edge of time runs amazing important thing right after your emulator gets downloaded and installed apply the playstation 3's official firmware so i have already provided the link in the description you're just going to go to dart sterney's website and download the latest playstation 3 firmware go to file and you're going to install the firmware it's going to bring up the window you just have to select the dot pup file open it and it's going to take things from there if you right click on the game that you're looking to run you're just gonna go to custom configuration and here if you go to advanced tab you're going to look for v blank frequency set it to 120 hertz and 
check this box that says v blank ntsc fix up after that apply and close nothing else right click on it boot with custom configuration okay so this is basically how the game is uh, i'm just going to hold to skip i'll just show you guys a little bit so as you can see the game is running pretty okay you are not going to experience this stuttering trust me on this because it's uh it's only going to happen if you have a low end pc the reason i am experiencing this is because like i've said i'm running two different types two different heavy hitting softwares at once so that's why you're going to experience this stuttering other than that you're not going to experience this Now look at this, I'm recording this game through an external source. This is what I meant. If you notice, it's not, there is no stuttering and there is no performance issues. The game is running very smoothly. This is exactly what I'm talking about. There is not even, unlike the previous time, there is no stuttering sound stuttering and also the game is not getting stuck as well so this is basically what i'm talking about you're not going to experience much issues other than like you know the parts where it's going to where it's going to need to compile the sh shaders or load up a little bit of the textures or the details in the world other than that if you have a good enough pc then you're going to get a seamless experience okay so yeah that was it for this video this was retro bat for your windows gaming pc if you want to experience an all-in-one emulation seamless emulation then obviously this is the way to do it if you liked this video make sure to drop in a like and subscribe check out my other contents i do live stream so make sure to stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button join my discord and yeah i'm gonna see you guys on the next one dr brute 7 signing off Putang ina, si optimum pride Fucking inang yan, optimum pride <laughs> Babe, si optimum pride do <laughs>